Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Predator Tracker software. I will be showing a high level demonstration of Predator Tracker focusing on real time check in and check out as well as purchase requests with recommendations. So let's talk a little more about what is Predator Tracker. Predator Tracker electronically automates the tracking and organization of your tools, gauges, and fixtures. Predator Tracker improves manufacturing processes and efficiencies with real-time check-in and check-out. Tracking of consumption rates, reorder levels, scrap, and calibrations. So let's have a look at Predator Tracker. As you can see here by the flowchart, here are items that Tracker has the ability to manage, starting with importing your inventory such as tools, cutters, inserts, and gauges. Following the flow here, you will see the ability to create an issue and receive purchase requests. Continuing the flow shown here, you will see that this is where all of your available inventory will be stored. Predator Tracker supports three database types, Access, SQL, and Oracle, SQL being the most common. If we look over to the right, you will see the Tracker has the ability to make inventory items active or inactive, or even find or lose those items. So again, just to review, this is the flow of how your inventory would flow through Predator Tracker's database. Again, reviewing here, we have the ability to import, reclassify, create kits, assemble kits, exchange a kit component, and disassemble kits. Of course, not forgetting the ability to check in and check out any of those items. So let's dig in and have a little bit more of a look about some of the features of Predator Tracker. I'm gonna be focusing on here on some of these menu items here. So for here, we have the ability to create a new purchase request and even add new components. As you can see here, our new components can be anything from a tool, a cutter, an insert. And then within a kit, we have the ability to have kit types that have various different things. We start here by Again, those of you who are familiar with Predator Tracker know that anything in blue is required, anything in black is not. But here we have the ability to look up and see what is a kit type and so on. Again, at any point in time, since we're using a wizard, we have the access to our help file. Our help file gives us a direct help link right into that help topic. Here you have the ability to look at help topics on new kits, new gauges, new jobs, and so on. Getting back to new components, we again have the ability to have uh, crib locations, customers, jobs, operations, and shifts as well. Again, this is all data database driven inventory. So we have the ability to associate various different tool types, tool numbers, and cutters to various different locations. The other thing we have the ability to do is once those items have been imported, um, utilizing our P import, we have the ability to come in and edit those, such as editing items like tools, cutters, inserts, kits, and gauges. Again, we also have the ability to look up those components or edit those components as well. Various different processes. Some of these are just quick links to some of these tool tips here, but checking in, checking out of an item, checking in, checking out of things such as tools, cutters, inserts, gauges, and so on. Again, here are our purchase requests. This is where we would issue a purchase request based off of the recommended um, min maxes and quantities and purchase prices and vendors within Predator Tracker's database. So we would issue a, a purchase request here. We would select from our list a vendor. We would then select a PR number. We could put in a custom number if we needed to and then select next if that PR number existed, okay? Again, a lot of this information is going to be imported or inputted into your database. Getting back to the process tab again, purchase requests we can also issue, then we would receive and have the ability to void as well. Transfer crib contents, a lot of this, a lot of the contents from one crib may need to go from one crib location to another crib location. This is where this would be done. Select crib location A to crib location B. 
view, we have the ability to view all of our tool types. This can specifically be done in a report type here. Here is all of our tool types, 40 taper, finishing, and roughing. Down here, we have the ability for attachment notes or any reference attachment as they pertain to that specific roughing tool type. Getting into the reporting side here, we have the ability again to base our reports or look up reports for our tool types, our tool numbers. So if we're trying to do a search on what tool numbers we have or cutter types or numbers, you can see here that we break things down by tool type and then it's number. So we would select the tool number and this is gonna show all of our tool numbers. We have a small database here, not anywhere close to what would be in the real world. Same goes for charting. We can then look up our tools, our cutters, our inserts. We can look at, look for items that are lost and or have been active or inactive, um, where they've been used and so forth. We can look at consumption trends by simply clicking on the report for the dates. Uh, either we do it here on the pull down, which are really quick, either a day of, week of, month of, quarter of, year of, as you can see here. And then the type. Are we going to be looking for tools, cutters, inserts, or gauges? Again, back into the charts, we have a crib summary, transaction summary. This is a good chart to be able to look up to see what transactions or what transactions have happened. In this case, my chart is, you know, between 2019 of... Uh, XYZ month as of 12-28-2020. I have check-ins and check-outs. Of course, you're going to have much more check-ins and check-outs as they pertain to you. Again, now we have consumption, trend, consumption trends, uh, crib transaction summaries, gauge calibration summaries. So those of you who want to look at uh, gauge transactions to see which calibration uh, of the gauges have passed, failed, and pending. This is the report that you would run for that. Again, for customers who are wanting to track gauging, such as uh, calipers or no go, no go gauges, and so on and so forth, this is where you would be able to add, you would be able to track those. Back into charts again. Then we have our inventory. We can go in here and we can look up our inventory by value or quantity. Come in here and look up all of our tools. Um, all of our located at everywhere, include all of our inactive tools, click OK. This is going to give us a brief summary of what our existing inventory is, whether it's active or inactive. Okay. So let's look, look and talk a little bit about these, uh, these menu picks right here. Um, these menu picks allow us to come in and add a new tool or add a new cutter or add a new insert or add a new kit, gauge, crib location, a new part, and so on. Uh, these here are to check in an item that we've received from receiving, and here's where we would check those out as an operator. I'm gonna step through some of those. So back in the beginning, um, when I was explaining everything, we had the new purchase requests. Um, I'm gonna say here, uh, it says, do I want Predator Tracker to make purchasing record recommendations? This is the thing Predator Tracker has the ability to do based off of your min-max order quantities, um, who the vendor is and what the prices of those are. Uh, we have the ability to look in that database and make recommendations. And I use the word recommendations because we're not linking into any kind of purchasing. We're just making a recommendation. So here we would say these are all of the recommendations. At this point in time, I don't have any recommendations. But it would take a total of all of my tools my cutters, my inserts, and it would give me a total. If I needed to add more of those, I could. I could come in here, just click the Add button, and say I want to add a few finishing tools. And here's the number I want to add. I click OK, and it says I need. I want to add 10 of those. I can do the same thing to the cutters. I have a cutter type. Again, everything is um, categorized by type first, then number. All right, say I'm going to do just a, a finishing or what were you here? We were our, in our finishing, so we want to add a finishing. We'll be adding some finishings. 
spools and cutters. Click OK. I've got 15 of those. <clears throat> These are automatically pulling from my my quantities of what my minimum orders are. Okay, what do I have to order from each vendor? Okay, and it's even going to give me um, information if I scroll over here. My amount price for each vending quantity, my actual vendor, the catalog number, and so on. I could do the same thing here with an insert type. Let's say I'm going to just do a square insert, and again. Um, we're right here and so now <clears throat> I have uh, various different uh, quantities and types I can come in here and click next I then have to put in a PR number I could then have that PR number um, added and I would click finish I now have a purchase request based off of some of my min maxes that I could then submit to my uh, purchasing department and then they would in, then go in and make those requests uh, to those vendors and get that all squared away. When those items receive, are received is where we would come in and we would check, this, check these in. We would want to check these items in or we would want to come in and do a process and we would do purchase requests. We want to receive the purchase request. So we would type in um, from the vendor, we would type in what the PR number was. I believe our number was 1123, 112233, I believe. That would pop that up if that was the appropriate number. And then I would receive that purchase request. And then <clears throat> once receiving that, then those items would be available for checkout. So I could come in here and as a tool room, uh, tool crib attendant, I would then be working um, with the operators, programmers, and so on. I would either have a, a pull list um, that they did or request for, and I would hand them their, uh, their items, or they would simply check them out on their own. So when we check things out, we have the ability to check these components out to a specific department, location, group, machine, and user. Now, if you don't want to have, if you want to have all of these blue, we have the ability to come in here in our options and then do check in, check out options. So we have things like enable the check at, check out to resources is either going to be required um, or optional. So you don't have to have the check out required. It could be optional. Check in could be optional. And then we have the ability, do we check things out to a user? Is that going to be required or optional? job or traveler or a part in this example i have these are all optional and then i want to know who was this checked out to so if i need to ask i know who was using that and i could even check this out to an operation if i wanted to as well okay i'll cancel this and we'll go back in and look at the checkout options so here you can see that i just need to uh, select this to a department. So I work in the lathe department. My name is is Mike. And so those are the only two required fields that I'm going to be doing some checking out to. So here are my components of a tool. So a tool number exists. You know, it could be have something um, just the tool as a tool could be anything. It could be a cat 40 tool holder. It could be anything that you classify as a tool it doesn't have to be represented by this picture. A cutter is going to be a cutter. Again, it doesn't have to be an end mill. It can be anything that's a cutter. And then insert. We all know what inserts are. And then a kit number. So a kit number could be a tool and a cutter. And that's a kit. So let's say I just want to select a uh, 40 taper. How many of those do I have on hand? I don't have any of those. Not a good example. But let's say I, let's continue with the finishing a finishing tool and maybe that tool is made up of a couple of different things maybe it's made up of this cat 40 holder or a cat 40 holder and a cutter okay um, I have four available here I'm just gonna double click and it says now I've pulled it here's my tool type here's my number here's the name available quantity on hand how many I have and now uh, the its crib location okay and let's say I want to um, check out some inserts. I want to finish insert. I'm going to select, let's say, maybe two of those. Uh, we'll just do one of those. And then for 
not going to be doing the nose. Maybe I needed a gauge. So I just have an outside OD micrometer that I want. I've got uh, one of those that I want to check out. So we'll double click. There's one. So right now I have the ability, if I'm the tool room attendant or if I'm a user, an operator, I just want to view my pull, my pull list. And my pull list has barcode scanners that I could scan these items. Um, if I was out on the shop floor and I could scan these and they would automatically be checked out um, out of that inventory, okay? Or we could print barcode labels, so on and so forth. Predator Tracker software has the ability to integrate in with um, our Predator uh, PDM software and also has the ability to integrate in with Predator DNC and MDC as well, all right? We for, fully support RS-232 barcode scanning as well. So we've viewed our pull list and now we want to go ahead and check everything out. We're going to click OK. It's going to say, do you wish to see a receipt of this transa transaction? We'll say yes. It's dragging this over from my other screen. So now I have a history report um, that I can print out. I could either put with my, my traveler information or, or whatever, um, keep for my own record. Here's the department that I checked these items out to. Here's the user. I'm not, we didn't require a job or a part. Um, this can be configured quite easily if you need that to be. And here are the items. Okay. So very useful. Um, you know, we have the ability to, uh, we've shown the ability to uh, make purchases based off of purchase requests. Uh, we've received that. Uh, we created a new one. We've received it. Received it. Um, we even have the ability to issue that purchase request. We've then received those items in. We've now checked those out, and we have the ability to again. Um, you know, we even showed we're going to create new, um, and/or we are going to edit the our, our existing. The other thing we have the ability here to do too is. Um, we can add gauges. We can, if you're wanting to control, control gauges, we have the ability to put in your tool or gauge number. If it's a tool that needs to be reworked, reground. If it's a tool that uh, you get sent out for a regrind, um, here's where you would input that information. Certain tools have requirements for that as well as gauges too. So here's our tool rework uh, queue and here's um, resume work queue. So we could do this by date and time or how many times checked out and used. We can do the same thing for the calibration queue for gauging as well. Now here is where we have the ability for uh, to just do some really quick lookups so we can view our tool numbers. It's the same thing as this view tab here, but only it gives us a tool tip. So we view a specific tool type. We can say we want to look at all of our finishing tools. We click OK. We now have the ability to look at all of our finishing tools. And these are the only ones we have in our database right now. And same thing again with our cutters, our insert types, uh, square, our insert material, um, carbide. Again, we don't have anything blue fields here. So if we just wanted to look at just the inter, all the insert types that were square, we select OK and drag this over here again from my other screen. And that's going to show us all of our insert types. OK. Same thing with our gauges as well. So if we want to do view gauge numbers, I did a test gauge outside micrometer. Let's say we'll just view the test test G, test gauges. So this is where I would be able to view all of these. Again, this is just being able to view the inventory that's on hand or the inventory that is in the database. Again, available inventory stored within the tool crib locations, okay? So once the, the data or these items you know, your cutters, gauges, tools have been imported into your database, SQL, Access, or Oracle. You then have the ability to uh, turn them into kits. You have the ability to view them, all types of things. Now, some of the things we didn't show that I want to show is the ability to have various different views of this user interface. Right now, this is a full-blown admin view. And I have the ability to create just about anything that I want to do. I can do everything that I want to do. I, I can do with the software um, based off my login. Okay. So we offer the admin seat of the software as well as client or shop floor seats of the Predator Tracker software. And what we do, we have the ability to manage these people so um, and users. 
So we uh, start off by creating new users and then we could then edit those users and give those users specific um, um, access. Okay, let's just pick this bottom one here. And so this is the actual user. Um, I could come in here and edit the properties here. I could change what shift they're on, what their job title is. Again, anything in blue is required job or black isn't. But if I don't know what job titles I've used in the past, I can just click on the dot, dot, dot here and I could type in the job title. It would then show me um, which ones I'd used in the past. Again, if you don't know what job title means, interactive help, and you click that, it's going to say this is what the new job wizard looks like. And you can step through this dialogue, these instructions here on how to create a new user, okay, or edit a new user. Uh, let's go back to here, go back to the admin again, and then do assign users or assign permissions. This is where we control. Um, I'm a user out on the shop floor. I don't need to have all the abilities to be able to create anything um, and or edit anything. Maybe all as I need to be able to do is do things like a few processes, maybe check in, check out, um, maybe um, view. I want to be able to have that person view everything. Um, history, they don't need to run history. Um, reports, they don't really need the ability to do any kind of reporting. Uh, we're getting down here. Our charts, no, no charts, other. Um, so we would basically come up in here and we would look for uh, to check in and check out. We would highlight the check in and check out. Um, so then basically a lot of these buttons would be grayed out. They would only have potentially the view, which would be these right here, and the check in and the check out. Okay. Okay, so we'll cancel this. And so the other thing you can do is you can create users and then assign those users to specific user groups. So if you want to have user groups based off of um, specific groups, we have here, maybe they're MDC people. Again, this is just how we have this in here. PDM admins, tracker admins, travelers admins. These are admin groups. If you wanted to create your own group, you can create your own group. So again, looking at this flow here, Predator Tracker software is tracking your consumables. It's tracking your regularly used inventory items, such as tools, inserts, or cutters, gauges, um, tool kits. Um, again, we have the ability to check those out to various different job parts, operations, users, and even machines, and then run reports on where those are used what the consumption trends are, run reports on where and how often you're ordering that specific item. And then as far as the purchase requests, we are basing those purchase requests based off the actual uh, tools and inserts and cutters that you're using out on the shop floor. And we're giving you the ability to define you know, who you get those from, what those costs are and more. So that concludes our high-level demonstration of Predator Tracker. I'd like to thank everybody for joining me. If you'd like to see more product demos, uh, high-level demonstrations, go out and do a search to YouTube for uh, more videos. That's Predator Software Incorporated or INC. Um, we have quite a few demos there. If you have any questions or would like to request any more information or more detailed demonstrations, please go out to our website uh, at www.predator-software.com. Again, that's www.predator-software.com. And I thank you so much for viewing.